So there are many questions like how do I actually smear rats when it comes to financial transactions and all that? And if you look at the way she can actually smear rats, we will be using two weeks to actually explore how you can actually smear the rats. So it's, it will be a two week series of videos and all that. Now, but the way you understand the issues of economics, psychology, and then there is a science behind that. Now, there is something called the there is ideation, and then there is what we call reality. So an ideation is like, oh, you there is a preconceived notion on how things should be. But after that, there is this stuff that, oh, the things are not really what they actually are. Now, money is something that is very, very, very critical when it comes to the issues of life. Money has actually caused the betterment of life, and money has also caused wars, money has caused the loss of life, money has... Uh, caused a lot of things that were very very traumatic. I was listening to, I was watching a video, I think a few months ago, where I think a child would die because the parents could not afford. I think it was below one dollar in Nigeria to actually take care of the child head. So money is something that is very critical, and money is something that people want to take from you. Now, I I just tell people that with great opportunity comes great responsibility and it is not a matter of like when you are seeking a position maybe you're seeking a political position you are seeking an office it, with that position there comes benefits yeah but you have to realize that such opportunity comes with benefits and then responsibilities so how do you smell right it's not going to be a one series course it's going to be a series of courses and other the reason I'm putting it to be a series of courses and all that, you know, we live in a generation where the, the, you know, we want things delivered on our doorstep. And we live in a generation where people feel to be entitled to things and all that. Why I'm saying this is because um, people never sit to learn anything until they are forced to learn it the hard way. And that is why we have J's. That is why we have hospitals. That is why we have all these places. So that those who we will not listen to instructions, those who will not listen to the way that it should be done or should not be done, we end up in such places. So I believe that money is very, very critical to the running of life and property in many, many places. So the, 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 the two week series, of course, I'll be using Mark, uh, uh, Mark Fisher's, sorry, Ken Fisher's, Ken Fisher's book. To actually explain to you on how you can actually smell it right now I teach you that I'll be learning the process and then others I'll also be teaching people so that does not mean um, a kind of um, a guru in the space you know I'll be learning and also um, teaching alongside now I have had the experience I've had a lot of experience with people I've had a lot of experience with companies I've had a lot of experience with investments and all that and with my experiences so far, I have become, I'm, I'm beginning to, I don't see things from the surface. So most times I don't take people from, for their word anymore. Rather, I take action for their word. Why? Because we live in a generation where there are many persons who are not politicians, but are more, who are more worse than politicians. So we will we'll be explaining the trends on how things actually work, the psychology, um, um, the the science and the economics of fraud. How you can actually smell that? Some institutions will be giving examples of a lot of persons. We be giving examples of a lot of businesses that actually screwed up people. There are governments that have been screwed up. There are individuals that have been screwed up. There are institutions that have been screwed up. So financial crime is something that is going to be that is that is everywhere, and it's not going to leave. The human race. Why? Because it is inherent in the nation of most people. But some of the talks we want to, we want to cover today is in the arena of, I will be discussing maybe three or, four or five things to just give you kind of some or overview and all that. Now, the first thing has to do with the custody, uh, custody and decision making. So we're talking about resources now because what the, uh, you are being duped of is money and all that. So when it comes to the issue of custody and uh, um, decision making. So you already know what decision making is. Okay, this is the person who are involved with decision making or whatsoever that uh, dimension. Then the last thing again is custody. Who is in charge of the funds? Now, 
the fact that an, an, an institution or a personality or whatsoever institution is in custody of the phone does not mean that they could be fraud. But however, it could possibly mean that they are a fraud. We'll be giving some examples and all that. Now, one of the things you have to know is the issue of custody. If a person, imagine in an, in, in an institution that the person who is in custody of the funds, okay, let's say the person is the treasurer, and then the person who is, the people who are involved or person involved with decision making, let's say secretary or whatever. So if, if you look at how they run organizations, the person that is involved with custody is not the same person that is involved with decision making. Now, there are many reasons to it. Why? Because when you go through personal life, when you go through uh, uh, business and all that, it's not really, really a good idea. Why? Because a person should not have those two powers. That, that, that is the main thing. A person should not have those two powers. If you look at um, the government, how the government runs, you have the Ministry of Budgeting, you have the Ministry of Finance, and th these are the ministries that are in cost of your funds. But when it comes to like decision making, there are different processes to which you don't just come and because you're in custody of funds and release things and other. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the issue of uh, ROI. If they are too good to be true, the return on investment and other. Now, one of the things you have to understand that there are certain um, there are certain needs of humans, and those needs can actually be exploited. Um, one of them is the issue of, of food. We have the, the need for sex. We have the need for money and other. And if you, you see that all through life and other, a good, very good example of uh, let's say the need for sex is um, people using women for adverts. That does not mean there's anything, but you, you if, if you are very logical, you will see that um, some of the adverts are not really, really portrayed. But though they know that people could actually trick or give attention to those clothes, they actually use um, women. Now, the, ne the one we want to focus on, we are not concerned about women or sex or whatsoever. What we are concerned about is the money aspect and all that. Now, it's a common, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a common th um, stuff in humans. Humans want um, maximum output with minimal inputs. So we want to take, we want maximal, uh, a kind of maximal withdrawal with minimal input. It, it does not really, really work out that way because if you talk about how the bank works, you cannot put in X amount of dollars in the bank and go and withdraw an amount that does not correspond or that is equal or below what you actually have in the bank. Now, when it comes to the return on investment, when a platform is involved with anything and they are so confident, that is the first thing is has to do with the issue of confidence in the stating of the ROI. So when they are so confident and they tell you that when we give you such an ROI, there is no problem there, but you have to be very subject, but you have to be very, very careful of on what ground are you so confident? So if a person is giving you the ROI, you look at it, the ROI looks so big and would think that you want to consider that ROI, you want to consider the time frame and all that, then you want to consider the, the, the audacity to which such a person is suddenly making such claims. So if the ROI is very, very big and you're looking at the time frame, let's give a very good example. Someone is telling you invest a thousand dollars and the ROI could be daily or it could be weekly or monthly, but we tell you 30% like uh, maybe it will give you four times your money, which is uh, 400% in one month or three months or whatever the stuff is, and they are so sure about it, you want to be very, very skeptical. There are times to be skeptical. It's actually helpful. There are times not to be skeptical. So you want to really pay attention to those stuffs. And the next thing I will talk about is the method of achieving such ROI. So they tell you so confident that we will get this and we will get that. Now, I have uh, I have lived on the edge for a while now, and I, I, I told you I don't take people for that world. I don't take people for that world because it is not really, really what that actually matter about action. So if the method of actually achieving such return on investment is number one, now, there are certain parameters I will give you. We will study all this in the two weeks. If it's not simple to be understood by the public. So, if it's... Now, 
if the if if you're building something for the customers and you want the customers to actually get a product, it has to be so simple enough for the end use consumer. Now, you see softwares that are being developed today. You have to you, you you can literally operate a software without knowing how what was behind the code and all that. You can just simply type on Facebook without knowing that Facebook has a team of maybe a lot of engineers and other working behind and all that. Now, there are many of it does not really have to be complex. So if the method of achieving the arrow right number one is not simple enough for you to grasp it could smell fraud. That does not really mean it could smell fraud, but it could smell fraud. And then the, not, the, the, the second thing again is the method of achieving this ROI. First, if it is not simple enough. And then second, if the method of achieving this ROI is not open to the public. So it is one thing to explain that this thing is not simple enough. That thing again is not open to the public. It's it's like in the public should not be aware of it. There are no transparency with the method of getting this. It's it, you you should be you should it could be potential scam and all that. That does not really mean. But in these two books, we will see that and all that. And then another thing again is the issue of customer service. So the issue of customer service, if, like I tell people, I'm a person that I, I ask questions a lot and there are people who actually get offended realizing, how do you ask me so many questions? And I'm like, I should ask, it's better to ask. I always tell people, it's better to ask a foolish question than to do a foolish thing. So if you are asking questions, if a business is a business and you are asking questions in line, like, okay, you, you want to go to Canada. You're asking questions that pertain to Canada, right? And they are getting offended. Now, maybe one thing is they are getting offended at the questions. You want to be very, very careful. And then another thing again is, if they are providing just little customer service, if the customer service is poor, you want to be very, very um, um, skeptical also. And then, um, if the method of communicating, the, the communication channels are not transparent, you want to be very, very careful. So the, the, the last thing we want to talk about, there are many stuff to, that was, we'll be studying them for two weeks. There are a lot of people who come to me and they say, oh, okay, I want to learn about blockchain and cryptocurrency investing. How do I go about it? And I tell them, okay, you, why not? I have done the course or there are many courses. Then why not read it? They are like, I want it very quick. I know that. Okay, let's talk about the issue of claims. Now, I, 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 I wrote on Facebook a few days ago. I was telling someone, I, I wrote, I said, Whatever situation is, uh, there is more to this than actually needs to die. Now, the person said, I don't understand. I said, okay, there is nothing is a testimony that until such a thing is tested, tried, and then found to be true. So if I come today and make a claim, everybody, I can, I can actually pop, um, I can actually pop a, a, a book, block folio, I can put a blockfolio uh, app before you and then give you some claim that um, I made. Yeah, here is my portfolio. It's worth $50 billion, $50 million or $5,000 or whatsoever. And I can tell you how I made this and all that. It's a claim. But the question is, is such a claim actually true? So when you go on a, when you're dealing with the website and they're making some claims and all that you want to verify the 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 authenticity of such claims you want to verify if those claims cannot be true you want to be very very careful so two weeks we'll be exploring all this in details giving a practical examples from history right because um history actually repeats itself but every time it does the price actually goes up so, hope to see you in these two weeks.